Published 1322 EDT, the 1st of October 2017. Updated 1427 EDT, the 1st of October 2017. Only one day into October and already Liverpool's season is wedged firmly in a familiar pattern. Not quite good enough at one end of the field and nowhere near good enough at the other. As a result, vital Premier League points continue to slip through their fingers like grains of sand. Not even individual brilliance was enough to save Jurgen Klopp's team at St James Park. Philippe Coutinho's first half goal, curled with power into the top corner from 25 yards, was a thing of wonder, better even than the free kick he had scored at Leicester eight days earlier. But before long it had ceased to be the story of this game as once again Liverpool failed on the back of missed chances and the kind of defending that will get, you know where at this exalted level, Joe Lou equalises in bizarre fashion for Newcastle after Joe Matip's tackle rebounded off his shin and into the net Simon Mignolet is left stranded as the ball bounces off the Newcastle striker and takes an eternity to roll over the line Joe Lou leaps for joy after his goal brought Newcastle back on level terms at St James Park on Sunday Philippe Coutinho bends in a trademark curling effort to fire Liverpool ahead after 29 minutes of the first half day and Lovren congratulates the Brazilian after he netted his third goal in three games for the Reds Philippe Coutinho curls home Liverpool's opening goal. Click here for more from Match Zone. Liverpool had only been ahead five minutes when they handed Newcastle away back into the game. Central defenders Dayan Lovren and Joe Matip left a gap as wide as the Tyne Tunnel for John Joe Shelby to pass through and Newcastle forward Joe Salou ran clear to equalise. After that it was simply a case of whether Liverpool could regroup and come again. Ultimately, they couldn't. As had been the case from the outset, Klopp's team enjoyed the majority of the possession but when their opportunities came they couldn't take them. Daniel Sturridge, preferred up front to Roberto Firmino, couldn't beat Rob Elliott in the Newcastle goal when Kieran Clark heard early in the second half while Alex Oxlady Chamberlain, on as a late substitute, headed over at the death. So Liverpool were once again left to confront a painful truth, that being that if they're to challenge seriously at the top end of the Premier League then they know they have to win matches like these. With Tottenham and Manchester City winning comfortably away from home at the weekend and Manchester United continuing their own imperious early progress, Liverpool are all too aware of the standards that have been set so far this season. Their problems thus far have been clear and also familiar. Klopp's team do not convert a high enough percentage of the chances they create while, at the other end of the field, Liverpool cannot be trusted to do the simple things right. Sadio Mane watches on as he is beaten to a loose ball by Newcastle defender Deandre Yedlin in the opening period. Liverpool defender Joe Gomez clashes for the ball in the air alongside Newcastle goalscorer Joe Salou. Former Liverpool fullback Javier Mancuyo tussles with his ex-teammate Daniel Sturridge during the early exchanges. Liverpool forward Sadio Mane attempts to get a shot in at goal with his left foot. But during the clash with Newcastle line the first half here in the North East, there was further evidence of both problems. Liverpool were the better side by some distance in terms of controlling the play and also in terms of territorial possession. Klopp had fielded a familiar array of attacking talent, even if the selection of Sturridge ahead of Firmino was noteworthy, and it was not surprising to see them play some eye-catching football. Once again, though, Liverpool could not convert their superiority into goals and then, after they had taken the lead, they immediately conceded that advantage on the back of some poor defensive play. The goal was a superb one and it was no surprise that it was Coutinho who scored it. The Brazilian had seen his teammates waste some good chances over the first half an hour before picking up possession wide on the left, drifting past Matt Ritchie and curling a brilliant right foot shot into the near top corner before Shelby could get to him and close him down. It was a sensational strike and one to add to the free kick he scored at Leicester last weekend. Those who suggest that Sadio Mane has usurped Coutinho as Liverpool's best player have clearly not been watching closely enough recently. So with Liverpool ahead, they should have been able to move forwards and close out the result. Newcastle, after all, had not managed to respond on a single occasion when falling behind in the league this season. Jorginho Vinaldum comes close to giving the away side the lead against his old club as his header comes off the post. Newcastle midfielder Mikel Marino closely marks Liverpool striker Daniel Sturridge during a hectic game at St James Park. Liverpool defender Joe Gomez falls to the turf as Newcastle winger Christian Atsu comes away with a balhari, though Newcastle were offered away back into the game within five minutes. Shelby's 35-yard pass from his own half should be recognised. Starting his first Premier League game since being sent off on opening day, the former Liverpool midfielder could not have played his pass any better. 
but why the two Liverpool central defenders allowed him such a huge space to play the ball through is anybody's guess. Matip and Lovren clearly thought they could play the breaking Newcastle striker Josilu offside but the Spaniard timed his run well and enjoyed a huge slice of fortune as Matip's covering tackle diverted the ball onto his opponent's shin and passed Simon Mignolet into the goal. Liverpool could count themselves unlucky from that point of view but, as so often, they were the architects of their own downfall at the same time. Earlier, they had created some good opportunities but could not take them. One incident, from a 24th-minute corner, saw Jorginho Vinaldum strike the pose, Lovren scurfer follow-up against our defender from eight yards and main drag the second rebound horribly wide of the near post. That, in many ways, encapsulated Liverpool's season. Mohamed Salah also overrun the ball when played clear while Sturridge had a chance in the penalty area only for Newcastle captain Jamal Lassels to block the ball as he fell. Newcastle's attacking offerings were more sporadic and that was simply because they couldn't obtain enough possession. Shelby was ambitious with his passing as ever but was sometimes overly so, down the right side, Richie seemed keen to examine Alberto Moreno's defensive capabilities and did cut since the Spaniard early in the game to test Mignolet with a curling shot from the angle of the penalty area. After half-time not much changed for a while. Only six minutes passed before Liverpool missed their next big chance. Liverpool striker Daniel Sturridge sits down cross-legged as the away side toil against Newcastle on Sunday. Jurgen Klopp makes a double change midway through the second half in an attempt to force a late winner. Liverpool centre-back Joe Matip leaps high to win a header ahead of Newcastle striker Joe Salou during Sunday's game. Jurgen Klopp slumps over in the technical area as his Liverpool side struggle to break down Newcastle's culprit from Newcastle's point of view was central defender Clark who sliced a clearance backwards into the path of Sturridge. The England forward had only Rob Elliott to beat but couldn't do it, the Newcastle goalkeeper saving with his knee. On the touchline, Klopp wheeled away in despair but it was strange to understand why. The Liverpool manager should be used to this by now. With Newcastle still in the game, the temperature of the occasion began to rise and this is exactly what Liverpool didnt want. As Joe Gomez was booked for a high tackle on Christian Atsu, the crowd started to get involved also. Elliott was equal to Sturridge again shortly after the hour, dashing out to beat to him to a through pass, while the next two times the Liverpool striker ran onto the ball he found himself offside. Soon enough he was replaced by Firmino with Maine, quiet all day, replaced by Dominic Solanke. With 15 minutes to go, Liverpool were actually looking less convincing than at any stage of the game. A Lovren header from a deep corner was headed away from under his own bar by Shelby in the 77th minute but he was not under any great pressure everything about the game at this stage was frantic and that only suited one of these teams. Liverpool had insufficient karma composure to develop any kind of pattern and that played into Newcastle's hands as time wore on, Rafa Benitez and Jurgen Klopp embrace on the touchline ahead of kickoff at St James Park on Sunday afternoon a minute's applause was held before kickoff following the death of former Newcastle chairman Freddie Shepard this week so Lanka headed wide of the near post as he dived to meet Coutinho's cross from the left with six minutes to go before Marino fell under a challenge by the byline but got nothing, Marino had been quoted widely in Sunday news newspapers talking largely about the quest to prove himself at this level. On the evidence of this 90 minutes, the Spaniard has some way to go yet. So, it could be said, does his team. Marino did well to hook a deep cross to the far post with two minutes left and Oxlady Chamberlain did very well to get there on the gallop, but having done so, the summer signing from Arsenal could only head the ball over from six yards and, with that, Liverpool's race was run.